Hi, I'm Tom Mills from Tree Pro, and I'm here to show you what comes into our whitetail tree package. I'd like to first thank you before I go into that for purchasing our whitetail trees. The first thing you get is our one of our trees. It comes in three ways, in a sock pot, in one of our jiffy pots, or it could come bare root. The next thing you get is a 60 inch tall, five inch diameter tree pro protector. You get one of our 60 inch tall treated pine stakes, a fertilizer pack, a weed mat with sod staples, and a bird net. Now we're gonna talk about the tools you need to plant your whitetail tree. First thing is a spade. We like to use the long nose spade. It makes a nice, good diameter hole. It gets deeper than most other regular garden spades, but any garden spade will do. Next is a hammer. This is for pounding in the stake. Uh, a sledge will work for uh, some bigger projects, or we have a we use a gas-powered um, fence driver, fence post driver, to put our stakes in for our big projects. A razor knife and a pair of scissors, and this is just to do some trimmings on the pot. After this, we'll go start putting in the tree. Okay, now we're going to talk about preparation. You didn't want to watch us dig a hole, but we've got one here. We don't want to go more than 12 inches deep for any of the type of trees that TreePro has, because we want to make sure the stake gets in the ground into three inches of undisturbed solid ground. Obviously, if you're using one of our Jiffy Pot trees, you don't need to have a hole this big. But a hole this big is good for our sock pots. So now we're going to talk about why we need the razor knife. The razor knife you're going to use to make slits on four sides on the top, just down from the where the dirt stops in the pot, and then the bottom. This pot will degrade and allow the roots to get through it, but these slits will help get those roots through it faster. And all you have to do is about a two-inch cut right through there. Then turn it on on the side, another two inch cut, rotate another quarter, two inch cut, and then the last one, two inch cut. And then do that same thing on the bottom. Next, we're gonna show you how to put this into the ground. When you go to plant your tree, make sure you got your NutriPro nearby. You're gonna need that next. So what you wanna do is you wanna put the tree in the hole and you wanna to try to get the tree about two to two and a half inches away from where you're gonna have that stake put in the ground. Then you're gonna take some of your soil and start mixing it in there. Get it in there tight around the outside. And what I'm trying to do is, I'm trying to get just enough dirt in there for now to hold the tree in its place and make it so it's about six to eight inches deep because that's where we're gonna put the NutriPack in. So I've got about six to eight inches of hole depth now and we're going to take the NutriPro, and you want to put it on the side. You want to try to get it about six to eight inches from the tree itself. In this hole, that's not quite enough space. That's, it's still going to be okay. Next, start filling in the hole with the rest of the dirt. And keep packing it in there, because we want to try to get rid of all the air pockets in there, because that could cause the roots to self-prune. And try to, if you have good clay soil like this, try to break it up as you're putting it back in the hole. We're getting close. So you want to try to get it back to the ground level and if not, a little bit up above it. Because we don't want a depression in here where water could potentially pool around the tree. Obviously, you can tell we've got good moist soil here this spring. All right, next, we'll start putting on the tree protector. There's three things I think I omitted when we were planting the tree. The first one is your root collar of the tree. That's about where you want to have level with the ground. 
in some of our pots, you may have a little bit too much dirt in there. Just pull some of that dirt out so you can see that collar, and that's where you want to place the tree, even with the ground. The next thing is the stake. You want the stake to be in the ground 15 inches. Some people will put it in before they plant the tree. Some people will put it in after they plant the tree. Either way is okay, whatever works best for you. And last but not least, sometimes if you have the uh, pot sticking up out of the ground with this tree, we didn't. You can trim off whatever white fabric is left with a pair of scissors, and that's where the scissors come in. All right, next we'll start putting in that tree protector now. I want to take a quick second to uh, go over our, our grafted persimmon. If you look at your grafted persimmon, you should see a V cut, and that's where the top up here has the buds that have the genetic material we're looking for, and then below the V where the color changes is the rootstock persimmon. The genetics from the rootstock persimmon, I'm going to take off this lens I'm using real quick and kind of zoom out here a little bit. The rootstock right here persimmon has the genetics we're not after. So this, you may see this start to bud out. You want to knock those, that green and those buds off. Then, like this particular graph has a, has a bud here and a bud here on the other side. It's got two. Sometimes it'll have one. Sometimes it'll have three. And you want those are the ones we want the tree to put its energy to. That's why we want to knock off any green that's from here down to the dirt. And that'll force that upward growth. And then once the, the genetics we're looking for, one of these two buds gets about halfway up the tube, you don't need to worry about knocking off the green right here. The tube will naturally cause it to die off as the tree grows upward. If you have any questions about this, reach out to us. Now back to the tree planting. The next thing you do is you install our weed mat. The weed mat is, appears to be of a trash bag material. It's a little bit thicker. It's got a UV stabilizer in there to make sure the sun doesn't degrade it. With all of our weed mats, you'll see them will come in a roll. This is a roll of 10. That's usually what our quantity of trees come in. There's an X punched out in the middle, and that's where you'll slide over the stake in the tree. And there's a perforated line. And that's where you'll tear the weed mats apart from one another. You'll also get the sod staples that come with them. These we'll use once we get down over the ground. So you take the X, and it's pretty clearly marked. You slide it over the top. Find your tree. Navigate your tree through it. And take this all the way down to the ground. Now, you can see that with this ground, we've scalped the top to remove any kind of vegetation. That gives us a nice, good, tight seal against the ground to make sure nothing grows underneath. Now, stretch that mat out. And with your four sod staples, we like to dog ear the corners. Send that sod staple through both layers and push it down. We're going to do that four times on each corner. Pull the thing, pull the mat tight. Push the sod staple down, dog ear the corner. Same thing, dog ear the corner. Push the staple through both layers. And last corner here. You don't have to worry about the mat strangling the tree. The tree is going to expand, and this plastic will just stretch right out for it. Next thing we'll do is put the protector on. Next, we're going to install our Tree Pro Protector. Now, this is our Nut Pro Protector. It's a five-inch diameter, especially designed for the white-tailed trees. The first thing you want to do is fold over these edges and get them to overlap. That's kind of the design, because if you have it like this, it'll make a circle. If you just kiss the edges and then pull the zip tie tight, it'll make a teardrop shape like that. So we take one of our zip ties, thread it through the first hole, thread it through the second hole, get the overlap going. We like to do this beforehand, especially with small trees. Get your overlap going and pull that top one tight, because that will determine what, what side goes over the other side the rest of the way down the, the tube. Then we want to work our way down. With each zip ties. The 60 inch get uh, four zip ties and the rest of these we just want to leave loose because then we can slide them over the top of our stake. And this up here we have two holes and that's so if you put your stake in the ground a little bit too far then you can move it down to this bottom hole. I just went ahead and put it in the bottom hole to start. 
work our way down here. A lot of people will have their uh, grandchildren help with this or their children help with this because it's a job that, and it gets the kids involved. They feel like they've helped, and it's a pretty easy job pretty much anyone could do. So now we've got it in the circle shape. We've got the zip ties loose. Now we're going to slide it over the top of the stake. Looking up to make sure we know what side is which. Let's put that first zip tie in, just kind of work its way down. Just make sure you're going to get that tree in the tube so you don't scrape it down the side. Oh, I missed this zip tie. Happens to the best of us. Keep sliding that down. I've got this one on there. I pulled that one a little bit too tight. Just do a couple clicks when you're doing the zip ties. I'm going to loosen this guy. And that makes it go down. Now, you're going to look down the top and make sure that that tree's as center as you can get it in the tube. And now, we're going to go ahead and work our way down the stake, pulling our zip ties tight with our overlap. It's about a three-quarter inch to an inch overlap. Work our way down here. And pull this guy tight. And here we go. And you want to get it tied against the stake. Just like that. The last thing you do with it, with the tree protector, is you fold back the top. By folding back these little slits, it takes away any sharp edge that could damage the fresh bark on the tree as it comes out of the top. The next thing we'll do is we'll grab a bird net and we'll put it over the top. One thing I got wrong is you want to put this bird net on before you fold back these plastic tabs. So you, the bird net's made of an elastic material. You just slide it over the top of the tube, and then you just kind of want to work it down until you have about a half-inch hole in the top. Just kind of keep stretching it out. And then once you get that half-inch hole up here, then you start folding back your tabs. Now, the burr net is designed to degrade by the sun within about 12 to 18 months, somewhere in that range, depending on how much sun you get. If you can see that tree is already right about here when you go out to check on it, go ahead and pull that bird net off. We don't want that tree getting caught underneath the bird net, and sometimes it can create a spiral. Um, the other thing that we may have left out is watering. Before you put your weed mat on, give your tree a good douse of water. That helps relieve, take, relieve, move any oxygen pockets that could be built up in the soil, and it helps that soil compact around the root system. The most common question we get after someone plants their tree is what do I do next to maintain? The very most important thing is weed control. You want a five foot radius circle around each individual whitetail tree. And what that does is it helps control the rodents and any other competing root systems. And you can do that chemically or physically with a mower or weed whacker. The second most common question we get about whitetail trees is watering. How much, how often and how much do I need to water? We give you the weed mat to help retain moisture. We know that in this field, the weed mat will retain moisture for up to four weeks in drought conditions. If you need to do a little bit of watering, you want to give it to them slow because you want the water to continue to work its way into the soil. You don't want to give them just one dousing of a gallon. That water will dissipate and feed everything else. So you can do that with a five-gallon bucket with a 16th-inch hole drilled into it. That'll leak the water out. Or you can come up, give this plant a good watering, move on to the next couple trees, water those, and then come back to this one and spray more water in because that's giving you layers of water working its way down to the root system.